down already. We are so glad you're here. If you want to join us live, go to rootbible.com and join. It is super easy and it's free. You can be part of the live conversation so you can ask conversation. Sound like a little silly old conversation. And so you can join live, ask questions. It's We pretend we're interactive more than we actually are, but we still love those that join online like Wes and Holly and everybody else. It's so much fun. I'm glad Wes is get to, gets to do it today. He's a lot of times he's at work, so this is super fun. So we're diving in to, wait, should we start with questions? Well, you know what I want to do? I want to switch things up because I want to just jump right in and start teaching. But I want to find out from anyone who's with us live because there's no reason to join live if you're not able to ask questions or anything. What's God been doing in your life? And, and, and as we've been talking about the real you, what questions do you have mm -hmm. about um either who God has made you to be or how to build that up in even your kids. Cause I know you guys, kids, guys have kids or any of that. How, what do you have? They're looking at me like, ah, oh, you're putting me on the spot. I was just ready to take notes. And, um, <laughs> just, it's always helping to, because I love that this is reinforcing later in the week what the kids are learning earlier. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, we've been through not this exact course, but so many of the things are echoed um, in like the reboot and things like that. Mm -hmm. Constantly being reminded and being able to remind our kids biblically, like especially with schoolwork and stuff like that, um, when there's frustration like there is, most days with math or, you know, whatever it might be. Sure. Just slowing them down and reminding whose mind they have and in, in whose image they're made and, um, you know, the power that they have inside of them and just kind of reminding them of that. Like Carter was able to take, you know, some deep breaths this morning and just slow down. And nice. uh, I feel like we kind of made it through a, a barrier that's been there for a while in one particular area of his math. And he was like, no, I just I constantly told myself, I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things. Um, you know, his power is inside of me. And so mm -hmm. anyway, just even little things like that, that aren't little, but seemingly little everyday tasks that. Yeah, um, that's huge. You exercise that in small areas and it pours over and builds that faith into bigger areas. So. I like it. I like it. Wes, you got anything? No, I just, uh, just feel like I'm a child of God and just whatever he's got for me for the day and um, mm -hmm. um, whatever he's got planned for me. Awesome. And that's exactly We have to get to the place where it's like, I really don't have my own plan. It's God's plan that I'm doing his, what he says to do. That's what I'm going to do. Like we talked about in our... Last class of Reboot was this morning. How is that possible? That seems crazy of our live interactive online version. And uh, you really, remember, anybody remember the days when it was every, every service you had some sort of declaration of, <clears throat> this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I, I can do what it says I can do. And getting back to that thought of this word controls my life. Yeah. I'm letting God direct my paths, not me. Yeah. And so, and that's exactly getting away from that is what opened the door. I really believe not just that declaration in church, but having a vision <clears throat> of who God has created us to be. <clears throat> I even brought him iced tea. He so. did. She did. <clears throat> yeah. I'm doing um, the Proverbs is, 31. <laughs> <laughs> is uh. That's what all of this identity issues came from because we were no longer reinforcing who people were in the church, which left the door wide open for the world to begin defining, well, this is who you are yeah. and this is who you can be and this is okay. And if and they this don't is even not, believe in and, their truth, why don't you just come up with your own? You can yeah, build your own truth. Whatever's true to you is what's true to you. That's what's real. And there's so many things that all launched from us not knowing who we were in Christ. 
because the whole world is waiting. That's looking for people to arise with power who know who they are, are confident in who they can be and are walking it out in its fullness. The world is desperate for those kind of people. They idolize all these people and then they fall or they trip up and then, oh, you know, just that's how it goes. You can't be loved. One. And they're looking someone to have depth, someone to have power, someone who can deliver on the things that they've heard are possible, but they can't find anyone doing. We can be those people. We have to be those people. And it starts with us knowing who we are. I mean, how silly is it that that who we are can be a tough question for Christians to answer? Right. Like, this is the basics. Who are you? Oh, who'd God make you to be? Well, you know, I'm just trying my best to, you know, not do my worst. Nope, he made you to be the light of the world. Done. In fact, that's who Christ said he was. And then he turned around and said, that's who you are. That's who he's made you to be. And so that's why we're talking about... Our identity, the real you, not the world's version of you, not your demographics world view, not your family upbringing, not your any of those other things. Let's get down to who has God made you to be. What are some things that were unlocked in Christ and through what he has done for us that he now expects us to be walking in in a daily manner, not just on Sundays, not just when we're at small group, not just when we're you know, yeah. meeting with some Christian friends so we can put on our Bible phrases that we don't even know what they mean, but we know everyone seems to applaud when we say them. So <laughs> let's just keep using them. Right. How many would say I've done that? I would say I've done that. And it wasn't until I dug into what is this really talking about that I began to receive the knowledge of him, which enables me to walk and live in the fullness of everything he has already deposited in me by his divine power. But it couldn't be unlocked without his a knowledge of him and who he is in us. In reality, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And we have to begin to live that way. And that's why we're doing this course and we're all stirred up about it because this is what's going to literally change the world through you. It's the knowledge of him and what he's already accomplished in you that will enable you to live like him and do his works and sound like him that even the world will take notice. Okay, I got to tell a story. We didn't tell it in this. Why is our light so bad? What corner is it? This bug is so bad. I got like Thank all you, this. Lord, for a shed studio. Woohoo. Okay. All right. So I got to tell you, so I didn't tell it in this reboot. I've still uh, reboot. Reboot I'm from the north. Uh, anyway, uh, don't you know that my uh, pastor that I grew up under, he was an amateur pro golfer. And so, like, he played with Tiger Woods and he played with Jack Nichols, Nicholson, Jack Nichols, yep. Nicholson. Which, uh, whichever one. Yep. I don't follow golf, so I don't. I, that's li- my limit right there. And he played golf with these people. And uh, so... He and his buddy would do like the amateur tour and he was going to, he, he walked away from that and went to Bible school when he got saved. And God said, Hey, I'm calling you to be in ministry. And he's like, you know, I make a good amount doing amateur golf. He's driving around in his bright red convertible and flying everywhere and doing all these things. He's like, I don't think that pays well. And God's like, do it. That's what I'm telling you to do. So he left everything and went to Bible school. And so his buddy was coming to Tulsa. There was a a big challenge there. And his buddy's like, hey, let's just play. And so he's like, okay, yeah, let's play it. Some side money wouldn't be the end of the world. When you're going to Bible school, usually you live on, uh, we went to our Bible school, went to his Rhema, Rhema. And the thing we always laughed about is everybody was really good at eating Rama noodles instead of ramen noodles. As we call them Rama noodles because everybody was eating <laughs> we those. Were that, was, Bible students. that was our, our level of expectation. Lord provide. Yeah. It wasn't our daily bread. It that was, was our the daily expectation ramen. expectation set by leadership is the scary mm-hmm. part. Okay. So anyway, we're not going there. So to make a short story long is what I feel like I'm doing here. <laughs> so he's out there playing golf. Uh, with his buddy, and there's a single guy coming up behind him, so they were just going to let him play through. 
And uh, so as this guy's approaching, uh, my pastor realizes it's Oral Roberts. Like Oral Roberts, the healing evangelist, had tent revivals and all these thousands of people getting healed. He's coming up playing behind him. So he's kind of like, oh, this guy's so cool, but I'm not going to. He's kind of like me. If you see somebody that's normally mobbed by people, I will do my best to do the opposite of yeah. that. And so I'm making you nervous. Yeah, so I'm gonna hit it. I got my right tea right here. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Anyway. Um, so he plays through. And uh, as soon as he's out of earshot, my pastor's unsaved friend turns to him and goes, who was that? I feel like I just watched God play golf. Who was that? His unsaved friend recognized the anointing and the power of God on this man's life. And so some of you are sitting there thinking, yeah, but that's Oral Roberts. He had tent revivals. He did all. All these things that God told him to do. He was obedient to God and did these cool things. You are obedient to God. You can walk in that same level anointing. You don't have to have tent revivals with tens of thousands of healings going on. You, what's your responsibility? Obedience. God is responsible for the out for the outcome. <laughs> Did you guys hear a croak like Colin? That was random. You're responsible for the outcome. The raven. Ah, no, now I messed in. it up. You're responsible for the obedience only. He's responsible for the outcome. You don't have to figure out, well, how am I going to be able to walk in that level of anointing? How, what, how many steps is it going to take? How many Bible verses do I need to memorize? Oh, this is going to be too insurmountable. I just can't do all of these things. I don't think it's going to happen. Baloney. You don't have to figure it out. You say, God. Who'd you make me to be? What do you want me to do today? Done. Then you walk in it. And that's how you walk in the same level of anointing and power as all the men and women of old that we read about in our Bibles and in these documentaries or in these biographies of great men and women that have, have done these huge things. I mean, Smith Wigglesworth, he in his 50s, he was still just a plumber. Just a plumber. But he was reef, he was diving into his word and discovering who God had called him to be. And God launched him out of that into a ministry that went around the world. You're never too old. You're never too young. You're never too anything for God to be able to use. And I'm not saying that if you follow him, you're going to travel the world. If you're going to follow him, it's going to be tent revivals. What I'm saying is... You can walk in the same level of anointing and power as a parent, as a Sunday school teacher, as a regular public school in teacher. In a restaurant. In a restaurant. At a store. Literally in your neighborhood. everywhere you go because he says he will never leave you nor forsake you. You have the fullness of the power of God in that place because he is with you. We have to just get our heads around that he's there and that big. We have to, like we talked about in our, in our class, that we all are conduits of God's presence, but we're responsible for upgrading our circuit breakers. Anybody ever lived in a house where you have, you know, if you plug in your strayer straightener and somebody flips on the microwave, you're going to have to flip that switch. Oh, my word. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you who, knew. who turned on the bathroom <laughs> fan? You know, every time you turn on the bathroom fan, this happens. And the don't from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Don't do that. Right. We, we all. And then you. Our whatever. first house was knob and spool. Does anyone even know what that is? Are you old enough to know uh, knob yeah. and spool wiring? Yep. It wasn't even circuit breaker. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. <laughs> and so what do we have to do? You have to when you keep popping that circuit, keep bumping up against something. And it's like, oh, that's too much. That's just too much. You got to upgrade that circuit. You got to move to from from a 5 amp to a 15 amp. And what how do you do that? What am I talking about? You got to recognize I'm not breaking through this because of my own unbelief in who God can be in me. It's not That's even why. unbelief in God. You got to remember this. Mm -hmm. This isn't unbelief in God. It's often tied to unbelief in the finished covenant work in us. It's not that mm -hmm. we think God can't do it. It's that we think God can't do it in or through me. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, there's this, that is where unbelief comes in. That's why um, mm-hmm. you can have faith in your heart and unbelief in your head, right? Because he hasn't gone anywhere. He's given you his faith. But you can struggle with unbelief because it's going through the filter of the memory of your old nature or who you were. And that is not who he's made us to be. Right. And that is the only thing that can keep us stuck in unbelief or keep our, our circuit breakers popping when he's ready to take us into who we are and we rely on our old nature and get stuck and it pops. So the replacement is, is going, I'm not popping anymore. I'm not being held back anymore. I'm not going to limit it by who I was or who I think I am. I'll put my focus on you and I'm upgrading the system so that your power can flow through me. Mm-hmm. Tara, you raise your hand. Wait, wait, wait unmute, unmute. There you go. Okay. okay. <laughs> you were going strong. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Into it right away. No, um, that was that is so huge. I really struggled with that, with um, not understanding that if something doesn't manifest, it's not like I'd be like, God, I I swear, I believe in you. Yes. I promise. You know, yes. I, I know that you can do this, but yes. it has nothing to do with that. And I think a lot of people get stuck there. Right. Um, so that is really, really important. So I just wanted to say that. Yes, it's so important that we get our heads right and know who he is in us right? and know what we have because because of of us, what he has already done. Yeah, that's why I love that. What we're talking about was do we have a better covenant (laughs) than what David had? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, even today, the new the 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 church will say, you know, David, 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 a man after God's own heart, David, 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 David. Well, David was under what the word refers to as an old covenant, which was the blood of goats and and sheep, which was based on obedience of shedding blood on the behalf of their sins over a year's period. Right. And they would bring this unblemished. And that was the covenant he was under. And yet he was a man after God's own heart. So now today, do we have a better covenant? Mm -hmm. And so you think about David, man after God's own heart, took out Goliath, uh, reigned as king for 40 years after being faithful, even when being chased by King Saul and spending years with his ragamuffin band uh, hiding in caves caves and just, you know, doing raids on the Philistines and the other... Having uh, opportunity to take out Saul, right? And if you were in your flesh and in your own ability, you'd say, I know what God wants for me and he's put him into my hand. He's right here in my cave. He doesn't even know I'm here. We can be done with this, right? No one would know other than my my few guys here. Right. And And they'll vouch for me. And we can just move on with this, right? All carnal, 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 which was why I believe God called him a man after his own heart is because it was never for the convenience of his flesh. It was for the honor of God that he did anything. And so even in a moment, knowing God's ultimate plan, he didn't choose to fast forward the plan like we see in other areas of the word. He Mm -hmm. chose to follow God's plan and not dishonor the fact that this man was still God's chosen king for that country, no matter what it looked like. He went by what God had said. And that's why I believe he was a man after God's own heart. Now, we said well, covenant. Does anyone know what the word covenant means? Covenant's a big, it's one of those churchianity words that if you're not careful, what am I doing? Look at that. I made it so much worse. It's, <laughs> it's bugging me. What the world's going on today? <laughs> there you go. Is that better? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's the little things. It's, yes. No, it's, it's very little thing. It's a little room, okay? <laughs> All right, covenant, what's it mean? So in case you guys didn't know, yes, it's a green screen behind us. This is our future one day house. Um, house. Yeah, so, studio. Yeah. So anyway, covenant, it's a big word that has a really bigger wordy definition. Kate likes the big wordy definition. I like my simple one. So we're going to give you both. And then you pick which one you like. So, all right, Kate, take it away. I want to hear the big wordy what, word of covenant. Yep. Oh, no, I actually... Mine's simple, actually, because I love that it is with the son. The covenant of redemption is the mutual agreement between the father and the son respecting the redemption of sinners by Christ. I love that the covenant is Christ. 
Like the covenant is in, like because we're in Christ, the covenant applies to us, but the covenant is for us with Christ, which is why God must see us in Christ. I know mm -hmm. that seems like so simple, but basically it's an agreement between two or more that they will seal and execute applied by blood or contract. And that it's a mutual agreement that what is mine is yours and yours is mine. Mm -hmm. uh, the short version that we taught the kids, a covenant is a promise that can't be broken. In reality, it was a, it was a covenant between two parties that uh, they both agreed to share all their strengths, all their weaknesses, riches, debts, protection, everything, that if one was in trouble, the other one would always bail them out, even to the point of death. They were there for one another. And th this, this was a normal thing in uh, Old Covenant or Old Testament, even in New Testament, there still was happening. And it wasn't just Israelites that did this. Uh, even in, even in the uh, 1800s, Covenant was how David Livingston uh, the missionary evangelized almost all of Africa is because he had a covenant first with a one of the biggest, largest kings in that area, and he could show him, this is on my hand because it was signed with blood. This mark was cut like this because that's a covenant that I have with the king of, I forget where it is. And then everyone's like, whoa. Okay, come on in here. If you're in covenant with him, I want to make covenant with you too. And so he had all these scars on his hands from all these covenants he made with all these kings. And he could literally go anywhere in Africa and preach the word and see God move because of these covenants that he had. And they had all the protection of that entire kingdoms backing him up. So as he went into an area and they're like, you can't preach that here. All he would have to do is hold up his hands, show the marks, and he could do whatever he wanted. And that's exactly how we can be with the enemy. Enemy says, you can't do that. You're not ready for that. You need some more teaching before you would think about, you know, following him and expecting God to move big through you. You're, you're not one of those super apostles. You're not one of those people on TV. So you just... You need to tone it down a little bit. You may and what have... I love is when you hear that voice, it's with someone in the grocery store or a group of people at the soccer field. Or, you yeah. know, this isn't even like, we're not talking stadiums when we say big. This is big, meaning God moving through you, not limited by your carnal nature. Mm -hmm. And when the enemy comes against you and says you're not ready, he'll do it in the littlest of things so that you never prepare for being available in any situation. We just heard two testimonies this morning about yeah. uh, one was a person who had always thought she needed to continue growing a little bit more and didn't quite have what boldness. the word she says she, she had. Boldness. Right, she didn't think she had boldness until uh, a kid illustrated for her, look, the word says you already have everything you need for life and godliness. That means you have the boldness you need to do what he tells you to do. And so when she was at a drive through got she felt like god was stirring her heart to pray for the person at the at the window so she just Who reached by her, her hand self through definition she said she couldn't tell if it was a male or female and she could tell it was probably on purpose she couldn't tell whether the person at the window was male or female she just reached through her hand through and the person had a shocked look on their face cuz she touched she, their hand she reached through touched their hand and said i'm going to pray for you and the person in the window began to bawl, saying, I just lost someone that was very dear to me. You have no idea how much this means. Something that you and I would have pushed down, potentially, Especially in the past. maybe you know, uncomfortable. That's a little weird. Yeah. Nobody does that in a drive through Look how many cars are behind me. This I've could be that. an inconvenience to so many people. I have missed an opportunity because I'm think... like, oh, Lord, if there weren't far, four cars behind me. <laughs> Wow, really spiritually mature, Kate. You know, I've done it. I've been there. I'll never be there again. Right. But I've been there. And it's to knowing that he is with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. And he is in covenant with Christ. And we are adopted into that because it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. Which is how you know without renouncing Christ, the covenant remains. It does not have to do with us. 
it has to do with the covenant between the Father and the Son and our union with the Son by faith in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. I've made him Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth. Now, I don't break that covenant in my natural actions. That covenant was made supernaturally by the blood of Christ and naturally mm -hmm. by the blood of Christ. Okay? Once and for all. So next year, I don't have to bring another goat or lamb. I don't, I didn't break covenant. That blood went once and for all between the Father and the Son on my behalf. The mm -hmm. covenant is sealed in Christ. Well, back to David, even Old Testament, his his level of covenant, all the Israelites from Abraham on were in covenant with God because yeah. God made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants. Yeah. And yet when Goliath shows up, all God's kids at that point are turning and running. Every time Goliath would taunt, you can't take me down. I am bigger than you. You cannot defeat me. Right. And all, all of God's people are like, he's true. That's right. We can't. <laughs> we got to run. There's no solutions here. We just got to, we just yeah. got to, you know, we're going to end up doing what they say. We're going to be slaves to this worldly thing because there is no other option here. And David came in and David knew the covenant. Yeah. I really believe it doesn't. Even Old Testament covenant. Same he knew God. Old Testament covenant, and he knew that God had proved it out in the past, as he was out in the sheep field with the bear and with the lion. That God was in covenant with him. That he was there. He was protecting him. He was showing him what to do, how to live, and it would be no different with Goliath. Right. Goliath looked big, but David knew that when they he went out on field, David plus God was bigger than anything and could not be defeated. He knew it. He told Saul that exact thing. And then he told Goliath that exact thing. The taunt that Goliath had used to cause all the Israelites to run in fear, David turn around, turned it around and made it even bigger and worse and threw it right back at the taunter. So was David confident in himself? No. Was David confident that he could go out and try to act like God? No. Or act like Goliath. You're big and strong, so I'm going to no, act gonna like act you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like you, and I'm going to wear Saul's armor, and I'm going to do... No. No. He was confident that he had a covenant with God, and that he knew the voice of God, that he communed with God like he did with the sheep, and that he couldn't be defeated because of this, because the covenant doesn't change, and he knew it was true. So we didn't need to be in, com in confidence of anything except that, even to the point that God had him choose just the amount of stones he would need. Yeah. Anybody knows he cho chooses five stones. Everyone wondered why five stones? Goliath had four brothers. And that it actually says once he defeated Goliath, later on then his mighty men defeated the other four. He, start he opened the door for the impossible to be possible, and then those who followed in his way then were able to continue that action and eliminate that threat to the body of Christ. Yeah. And I, I never noticed this before until just when I was teaching it on Monday. Did you realize or notice that when David went up against the bear and the lion, when he's talking to Saul, it says when the, when the animal... What in the world? When the animal <laughs> turned on him... That he would grab it by the jaw and club it to death. But then when he went out to defeat Goliath, he didn't rely on what God had told him to do in the past. He sought, he had to have sought God on what to do for today, which was different than what he had done in the Before. past with the lion and with the bear. That he had both done, I'm going to grab him by the jaw and club him to death. With, with Goliath, the tactic was changed. Yeah. And before the, but that, the confidence you don't hear didn't. stones. You don't hear slingshot. Like mm -mm. it wasn't like this was a thing before that God mentions in the Word. He had been preparing him with a slingshot and stones. This was him relying on the covenant, not even his experience, but the faithfulness of God, the covenant promise of God. 
It's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And then his followers there Thank ended you. up being so good with the sling that they could they could knock down a man's hair with a sling, right? I don't think of that as a mighty weapon, but in David's time, <laughs> it, was. it ended up being the weapon. You didn't see Goliath out there, there's my 20-pound sling. <laughs> no, what did he carry? He carried a sword, sword, he had a spear, he had a shield, normal weapons. But David took something that was thought of just for a little shepherd boy and ended up raising an entire army with the tool that everyone else had discounted. Right. And there's things in your life that could be tools that everyone else is discounting as, you know what, that's too little. That's just, you know, something for when you're younger, whatever. But that God can use to not only help you defeat the things that are hindrances from you walking things out, but that will also pave the way for freedom for the body of Christ. And you're like, but I'm just me. I'm not that big, like you said, the big evangelist with tens of thousands. No, but you can pave the way for the body of Christ and your sphere of influence. And you have no idea how much God can use that influence to influence another, right. to influence another, to influence another. No big move of God and that we follow in the past started as a big move of God. Right. It started with one person being obedient when it was inconvenient. And when Consistently. it didn't make sense and it wasn't on their own confidence. It's so funny when you read through history, the people that he chose, you know, Smith Wigglesworth, who he added earlier, who the Christian body is mentioning a hundred times a day throughout it. He couldn't even talk so that people could understand him most of the time. He had such a slang that when... Stutter? Uh, like a stutter slang. People would say it was almost like a... I would get my pet. You know what I mean? Like, like um, I would understand how someone might sound if they were deaf. You know, like he would not complete words clearly. And yet people would join to hear him and make it out. Like it, he just, he had a way to talk. It was like a slang and it wasn't clear to most people. Here's this, here's this plumber <laughs> with a slang and he's changing the world. And still to this day changes the world by what he did and Christians talking about him. You know, when you look at who he's used, the man that started Azusa Street, wasn't he blind in one eye? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, blind mm -hmm. in one eye. A black gentleman, blind in one eye, started Azusa Street. And a white pastor allowed him to use his, his building and brought together what at that time sh nobody thought should be together just because of skin color. Right? Like, you wouldn't look at this guy like, oh, he's going to start a revival, you know? <laughs> like, he's blind in one eye. That's the kind of guy God, God will use right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. No, all the Christians are like, he can't <laughs> even get himself healed. How is he going to start a right? All the murmuring, complaining Christians. Like, <laughs> it, it is, there is no focus on the natural when we turn to our covenant that has nothing to do with the natural. It all has to do with Christ and the Father. And he's given us a seal which is the Holy Spirit that allows us to access covenant promises. That's amazing. But this, this flesh will burn up. I love that most of what Jesus did on the earth was always different. He was listening to the Father and doing what the Father said. He was not laying out a pattern, but he was laying out a, a relationship for us to step into that was hearing and doing not doing because that's what he did, hearing and doing. And in that covenant, we're confident in him. Remember, we talked about confidence so that we can walk out covenant promises here the way he says, not dependent on our own thinking, our own doing, our own ability. Right. It has nothing to do with it. And that really messes with your mind as a parent or as a friend in a world <laughs> that encourages each other and our natural abilities and our natural growth and our, right? And, and that's hard because you want to encourage something in some, someone in something they do naturally, which is good. But there's always that looming reminder that that doesn't determine how God will use you. That doesn't determine the faithfulness of his goodness through you. It doesn't determine the brightness of his light shining 
to all for all to see mm -hmm. your light will affect everyone no matter how good you get at xyz which is great and i love that you're good at it and use it for god's glory but it will never affect him using you because that is limitless but too often we go to god with the perspective of old testament old covenant instead of new testament new covenant we go to god and we're we're trying to be righteous enough in order to see some promises of God in our life. That's old covenant thinking. That's what Jesus has already dealt with. The old covenant demanded righteousness from man right. to receive what God had for him. The new covenant provides righteousness for man. Second Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become might. the righteousness of God. That way was made that weak and that was provided for us to experience his righteousness that then opens the door for his promises. Right. Under the old covenant, everything depended on man's obedience to God. In the new covenant, everything depends on Jesus and his obedience to the cross. It's through his Suffering finished through work. his finished work, through his death, resurrection, and seeding, that now we, as we are in Christ, Surrender. and everything is for him and to him and through him, that now we get to partake of what he already purchased. That's the great thing about our relationship with God. It's not that we just get to go to heaven. I mean, that's part of it. That's great. pretty awesome. We get to it's not just that we earth. get to know God which is also awesome and is part of it, but not the only thing. The unbelievable good news of the gospel is that the Lord has entered into a covenant with us and promised to bless us with everything that the word says is ours. Because the word is Christ. Because that's of, who he has the covenant with. Because of Jesus, right. Not because of you. There's nothing you could have done to earn it. There's nothing you can do to coerce God to release it on your behalf. The prayers that you pray, okay, God, I have done this for you and I've done this. So <laughs> I, can, can I just see some of this promise of God is an illegal prayer. It's old covenant. It's old covenant. God doesn't even recognize that style of thinking anymore because it's coming to him pleading for something that you already have. Yeah. It'd be like, so you might as well take a goat with you. And sacrifice it. <laughs> and try to get and God to appear. We've to prayed appear. those prayers. We have mm -hmm. found those prayers rising up from our carnal nature, even after a root class, mm -hmm. you know, where you want to go back to, I have some control of this, right? Well, my biggest control is surrendering to the finished work of Christ that was the blood that paid so that everything could be done. And the Father, through that blood, is speaking and working by the Spirit who will bring to all remembrance those finished works so that I can hear clearly how to conquer something right in front of me by those finished works and not by my own ability or my old flesh nature. It's so wonderful, it's almost scandalous. It is so great and it's so good that good news doesn't seem good enough. He did it all. And our surrender to that finished work allows us to be in Christ and do things greater than he did when he was walking on the earth because of the new covenant. Because his blood paved the way so that the creator of the universe and the word of God could make covenant. And through the word, I could believe in Christ Jesus and that finished work and walk in that new covenant. That's like better than good news. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can say there's not anyone good but him. It's not my covenant. I'm not earning it. I've done nothing. I've got no goat on the altar. The only thing on the <laughs> altar is my old nature so that he can live. His life in me. How cool is that? And it's a two-way street with this covenant. Everything that God has, we can ask for. Yeah. Because of Jesus. And everything that we have, God can ask for because of Jesus. And if he asks for it, 
We don't have a right anymore to our own opinion, our own ability to argue. This isn't a convenient time for me, God, right now. I don't think, you know, that's pretty, That's that sounds probably good in the end. But um, right now, I just need to focus on this or that and do X, Y, and Z. And let's readdress that in the future. Let's let's put a pin in that. Let's, let's come back to that. that. <laughs> and, and, and that's what we do if we don't realize... We're in a covenant with him that when he speaks, he asks, yes, sir, it's yours. I don't have a right to say I don't feel like it or that's too tough. Remember, a covenant was even to the point of death that you were going to help the other person. If they asked for something, you gave it to them unconditionally. That's our part of surrender. A lot of people don't even know that level of covenant today, which is why it's hard to conceive in our natural minds, right? Because America doesn't even know anything like that. The closest we know to a covenant is marriage. And that covenant is touted as breakable Mm -hmm. as far as the world is concerned, right? So the idea of what a covenant really is, is hard for the natural mind to grasp, especially for Americans. But when you look into it and study it out and help your kids and and help your spouse understand what a covenant is, it changes things. Mm -hmm. Because you realize it's unbreakable. From worldly thinking... Some people would try to say that's so much bondage. That's so restrictive to say that everything you have, God has asked us for. I mean, that's so much insecurity. <laughs> and, and, you know, what if he asks for this or that or, or, or causes this issue here? What do you, How are you going to be able to even do that without a level of, of consistency that you can set by your own control? But the reality is it's the place of real freedom. Because it's not our life that we're trying to live anymore. We don't have to fight for control of our own life because we've already surrendered it to him. And in that is true freedom. When everything that we have is his and everything that he has is ours, it's a beautiful union where we begin to be like him. You even see the development of the covenant in Daniel. When uh, he knew his mandate was to pray and the country makes it illegal, he opens his window and prays because his covenant first is to the Lord. Even in old covenant, you see it in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because it was like, I'm not turning my back on he who I have a covenant in, even unto death. So if I die, great. If I don't, great. He's there and he's my Lord. We see glimpses of the value of covenant in, in, in Old Testament all throughout and then we see the, the coming of the new covenant in Christ Jesus who fulfilled the old covenant by honoring his father, by not sinning, by living a life in the flesh and remaining faithful to the father unto death. So that, guess what? That death brings us into new covenant so we don't have to die. But how do we die? Just in the flesh, just in the old nature. We die to our covenant with death. We die Mm -hmm. to our covenant with darkness in the world and the dominion of darkness. And we take on new life in our covenant with that. All of those thoughts about this sounds like too hard. This would be (laughs) impossible. This is too scary. Are all thoughts based off of flesh. You don't know him. That's really what it is. You would be able to unconditionally trust him because Jesus himself said in John 10, 10, I came to give life. Life in all its fullness or life to the abundance. He's not out there to remove anything that that would give you joy or security. He's out there to remove all the things that are giving you a false sense of security, a false sense of peace, and give you the real in return. Yeah. That's what he's after. He doesn't want you striving so hard to create the systems and the things around you to co- to coerce a bit of feeling of what God wants you to live in, in peace and in rest and enjoy every single day. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's not something you have to put on. That's something you are and enjoy because of the covenant we have with him. It doesn't come with a disclaimer. Unless something's going wrong. Unless something doesn't look right. Unless something doesn't feel right. No. It's part of the covenant always. Mm -hmm. My covenant with him isn't determined on how I feel in a day. Or if things are going right and wrong. 
right? Even more my covenant with the Father. Even more my covenant with Christ, technically, who has a covenant with the Father. Because my covenant with the Father is determined by Him, not me. And His work is done. Which is why we can walk with grace and forgiveness and we can help each other repent for sin that you they may be healed and they might not make a covenant with death and destruction again by keeping secrets of what is really going on because we live in righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost those things can be brought into the light that are lies that don't belong there we can help people get them out and understand their new covenants with Christ who already did the work. Don't worry about the mess ups. Lay them down. Let them burn up on the altar because the covenant's already been made. Mm -hmm. And you are in Christ Jesus. And get to know him more so that doesn't happen again. Fill up to overflowing with him. That's why we can walk with graciousness with each other. And we can have that, that peace knowing that it's not what I do. That's why it's so easy to repent. Because when we mess up, that doesn't determine our covenant. Mm -hmm. right. It's because of our covenant that we can repent and it's like at the bottom of the ocean. It's burnt up never to return. It's because of the covenant, not because we repented. We get to repent because of the covenant. If it weren't for the covenant, we'd just burn up. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the covenant that it's easy to repent. And he replaces it with all righteousness, goodness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he equips us and prepares us to live out a life of victory, not a life of sin or hiding away condemnation or convictions that we hold inside that we've been freed from. But we don't live around anybody who knows their covenant in God enough that I could tell them and be, help be free of it. Mm -hmm. That's no longer, that's never how he wanted his body to live. Right. He wants us to live in this covenant with him and each other as a body that we care about each other, remaining in that knowledge of the covenant, the finished work, that nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. Let's stay there. Let's stay growing in the understanding, revelation, and knowledge of the wisdom that flows from that covenant that Christ made with the Father, and I am, and you are in Christ. My kids are in Christ. Their actions don't even determine their righteousness. If they've received Christ, they're righteous. That doesn't mean we're not correcting actions, but that won't determine their righteousness or their rightness with God. That won't determine whether or not they can be used by God. That rightness is just the diligence and patience. It's the adding to who, what he's already put in you by continuing to let God reveal it through them, through us. Right? Surrendering action, surrendering flesh on a daily basis with each other, with our children, so that we can align with the covenant. Mm -hmm. And that helps us then be confident in approaching him <laughs> because we know whose we are. Yeah. We know what's already been promised to us. And yeah. if we know the things that the word says, we know the life that Jesus lived we can have the same thing. Yeah. And that's why in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, and this is the boldness or confidence that we have in God's presence, that if we ask for God for anything that agrees with what he wants, he hears us. Mm -hmm. And if we know he is listening when we make our request, we can be sure that he will give us what we ask for. Why? Because we're in covenant with him. Right. But if you don't understand covenant, then you're not going to come to him boldly because you'll be judging yourself or others in the flesh mm -hmm. or what they can or have accomplished there or what they've done or haven't done. And that's not it. The covenant's immediate. Mm -hmm. The filling, immediate. The ability to have everything that Christ had, immediate. It's in you now. So if you can look in the Word and look in the Gospels and see Jesus doing things, reacting certain ways, having an attitude that you maybe want to have more often, ask Him, and it is yours. Because it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives within you. And He will show you how to get out of the way so He can live through. He'll show you the thing that maybe you need to surrender, a thought process that you've been holding on to, or a perspective of yourself that is incorrect and to, that will remove the obstacle for you being able to walk in, like Jesus said, life. 
in all its fullness. Yeah. That's what this is about. Not just for you, but because, because when you do this, you begin to live like Jesus. And how did Jesus live? Jesus said himself that he came to live as our example. Yeah. So when you begin to do this, you begin to be another example for the body of Christ to be stirred up to step into the fullness of what he has for it. It's not about comparison and I'm going to be better at this than you are and I look at this in my life and you don't have that. It's not about that. Or the flip side, look at all the things that they have and I have nothing and I'll never have anything because they have all these things. It's not about that. It's about you saying, God, here's what you're showing me. Teach me how to ditch that. Teach me how to get rid of that. Show me how you want and this is what you that. this is what you're showing me in the word that you are show me how to step into that show me how to release you the way that you want to be released in those relationships in those areas in my workplace in my family whatever it might be and he will teach you the holy spirit is the great teacher jesus himself calls him that yeah. so when we go to him and say teach me who i am in covenant with Christ. Show me how to walk this out so that I can have life in all its fullness. He's not going to give you a snake when you ask for an egg. Right. A rock. That's exact, or, or a rock for an egg. He's not going to give you, what does that verse actually say? So how much more will the God pour out the Holy Spirit when you ask? That's the point of it. That whole section is about the Holy Spirit bringing the food and the life that you need to do what he wants you to. And he's not going to hold it back. This is your key to stepping into the fullness of what God wants you to be, to represent him, to have, to represent him, to think, to represent him, because it's no longer us. It's the covenant that we are living out day in, day out, in front of his people and those that don't know him to show the goodness of God. That's pretty awesome. That's who we are. And that's what the world is waiting to see. Any questions? For those that are in the live class and can ask questions, or those that are oh, on the I online class. Oh, I failed at putting up any of our lower thirds today like we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> we, um, we love this teaching, and a lot of people, uh, the word covenant has become something everyone says, but doesn't necessarily grasp the concept of what took place. And that can happen a lot with Bible things. It happens a lot even for us still. So that is why it's important for us to teach these classes. That's why we have a class coming up next week about what really happened from the cross to the throne. Oh, That's I need free. to make a lower third And for that. Uh, we have another one coming up, uh, how to read your Bible and actually understand it and apply it. These are just mm -hmm. things available to us through the covenant that Christ made with the Father. And as we discover those things, the Bible says then we're able to release those things. The not knowing that we have those things is what keeps them closed in. It's not that they aren't there. It's not that we they aren't available. It's not that the Holy Spirit power isn't uh, going to use them. But when you don't have the knowledge to release them while we still have a soul and body and live in a fallen world, often people don't know that they have access to it enough to release it. And so. That's the kind of classes that we like to teach is to help people know what's already in them, what Christ has accomplished, and because of that, how they can actually walk that out in this new life living. So check those out on the site. They're all free, mm -hmm. and uh, you can watch them live on Facebook or YouTube, or you can join us live interactive here. When uh, Tara chimed in and Holly put her hand up and I didn't call on her, do you still have something to say? Okay. Oh, and I totally didn't even see that. I saw the hand go <laughs> up and then it went back down. I was like, oh, it took too long. And um, we just want to help you. And we want to help you grow and, and develop your roots deep in Christ. That's really all that matters. And then do the same with your family and your sphere of influence because that's how it works. It's homes, neighborhoods, and then nations. So, all right. Any further Questions before we go on covenant. Covenant's big coming into the Easter season. Keep that at the forefront of your mind as you're um, attending these Easter services, as you're reading the account of Easter in the Word. Uh, remember that that covenant was in process of becoming 
uh, sealed when Christ was going through these things. So it's really neat to read that and understand that that was our covenant unfolding. Yes, Miss Tara. Really quickly, I just want to say that um, I was late to the class because. Uh, yeah, you're fired. I'm, I'm out of my normal <laughs> Wednesday routine, so I just uh, not didn't even remember. And Holly texted me. She's like, "Where are you at?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, yes, yes. <laughs> so I like, picked the kids out of the house. I'm like, "Get out of here!" Because right? uh, you can't. I hop on, like, you guys, everything you teach always speaks to me. It's always helpful, but. There was one thing in particular that was so good for me. And I just love the Lord. I love the Holy Spirit. I yes. love that he let Holly know, like, you got to text her. I got something for her. I'm giving it through them. She's yes. got to hear it. And it's like, <laughs> you said that about, like, um, you said something about, like, your community and, how, and, and then the body yes. and how important it is. And yes. that right there, that was it, you know? Yes. So... So it's just so important to make sure that you're surrounding yourself by other strong believers yes. that, you know, can can let the Lord speak through them. Right. And and you'll get everything that you need from him because you already have it. Right. And it's it's just awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you guys. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pray you guys out. And uh, Unless, Wes, you got something for us. You got something for us, Mr. Wes. Well, it was just speaking to me, um, Holy Spirit speaking to me, just like um, I had a label on me, like, um, you know, they put a label on me like uh, you have a learning disability and that um, like my whole life that, you know, kept me, kept me back from getting into the word and um learning this stuff you know for years and years in the last couple of years i said no that's not going to stop me from memorizing verses getting into the bible yeah. and and all the promises you know yeah. like mm -hmm. so that's awesome that's, that's what awesome was speaking to me so that's awesome yes yes that his covenant with mm -hmm. you is not based on old nature mm -hmm. labels or or yep. bloodline labels for that matter right mm -hmm. your father dealt with your grandfather dealt right you know mm -hmm. it's like oh no it's so good that it's through christ and it makes it limitless that so much so he repeatedly shows us in his word he's going to choose those that don't have the natural ability to prove to those that do or don't that that's not what it's based on that is based on Christ, right? It's based on the Father's finished work. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Basically, any identity that we would take on that's not based in Christ is an idol. That's really what it is. Good or it's bad. It's something that you've let determine and take a higher place in your relationship with God yeah. than even God has. And you knocked and, that right over. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's awesome. Yep. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the incredibly, ridiculously amazing position that we have in Christ with you. Yeah. Lord, open our eyes to our life that is hidden with you. Yes. Open our hearts to challenge us whenever we're seeing ourselves or those around yes. our, us outside of their kingdom reality. Give us the words to say, to challenge one another, to, to walk in the fullness of the abundant life that you have for us yes. and help us to believe bigger and ask more confidently yes. for the things that you have already promised in your word, the things yes. that you say you've already made available to us. Yes. Help us fight our culture's view that has invaded yes. our own thinking. Yes that would tell us that we cannot or that it's wrong to ask for it yes. and begin to walk in the fullness of all that you have for us. Yes. That life and life abundantly that will draw all men unto you. Thank you. Thank you for that, God. Thank you. Help us better understand. Holy Spirit, teach us yes. how to walk this out yes. today. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, those that are mm -hmm. live in person. We love seeing your faces and those that joined us on yeah. the other various platforms. If you want to be live and be able to jump in and share, then join us in the Real You course. We have uh, one more month of that, of just identity, 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 identity. Yeah. And it's for every age group, preschool yeah. all the way through you adults that are listening. You're never too young or too old to understand who God has created you to be yeah. and begin to step into that. And so I want to encourage you, share this, like it, post it, whatever. I don't even know the words you're supposed to use for <laughs> whatever that. Whatever you do on social but media, do that. Do social media things yeah, with this things. Yeah. to help other people grow and understand who they are in Christ because yes. this are these are the truths that will set people free yes. to be who God's created them to be and unlock that that knowing on the inside that I'm made for something more but yes. the un inability to walk it out it's these things yes. and so do that and then join us live it would be so fun to have you join us live join in the conversations ask the ask the questions whatever yes. and so that's it for us. All right. God Love bless. you guys. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.